This was an attack that took place in the Har North area, in the west of Jerusalem, um, as there were worshippers going uh, to a synagogue inside a Jewish seminary uh, early in the morning. Two Palestinian men entered, we understand, armed with knives, uh, with an axe, shooting um, at those inside. Four Israelis were killed. Israeli police then came. Uh, there was an exchange of fire with the Israeli police and the two suspects were killed. The police have sealed off this area. Some still quite chaotic scenes there. A number of people have been injured and taken to hospital, including two police officers, we're told. Um, and really, this is just going to add to the tensions in Jerusalem, which have been simmering for weeks now, um, with a few other attacks have taken place um, in Jerusalem, in the east of the city, also in the West Bank, in Tel Aviv, a total of six Israelis killed by Palestinians in those. But this is really the deadliest attack that there has been in Jerusalem, the deadliest attack of its kind for many years now. Unfortunately, I believe what's happening today and like what happened yesterday is the result of this policy of Mr. Netanyahu and his government. They've been provoking the Palestinians constantly. I want to remind you and remind everybody that since the beginning of this year, the Israeli army and Israeli settlers have killed 2,260 Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank, including 600 children. And they've been attacking the mosque in uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the settlers have been attacking Palestinians. By the way, just uh, an hour ago, the settlers in Nablus attacked a Palestinian school and injured a child. This is a very explosive atmosphere, and I hold Netanyahu himself responsible for every bloodshed that has happened, whether for Palestinians or Israelis. We're, we're just this hearing, has to stop. We're just and hear, sorry, we're, sorry to interrupt. Yes. We don't have very much time. I just want to let you know, we are hearing a claim of responsibility for this attack from the Abu Ali Mustafa Brigades, which is apparently the military wing of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Uh, many people saying, you know, that all fronts should condemn this. Mahmoud Abbas's office has come out and condemned this. Do you join that condemnation, regardless of any provocation as you see it? I think every violence is useless, and uh, we've been advocating non-violence, but when we conduct non-violent peaceful demonstrations, we are attacked violently by the Israeli army. They injure us, they shoot at us, they kill even young people who are peacefully demonstrating with gunshots. Well, why and are we the seeing only, that this the, the, the reason, no, 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 wait a minute. The reason for all of these problems, which has been going on for 47 years, and for the thousands of Palestinians killed and the Israelis killed, is the continuation of occupation. In my opinion, today is a failure of the international community too, which failed to pressure Netanyahu to accept to end occupation and allow Palestinians to be finally free, to have their own independent state. This vicious cycle will continue. Just a Gaza more recent, is still under a much worse siege than was before it, the last attack. Yeah. Can I just pick up what's happened in recent days? Because we, ha we have seen a sort of unusual type of, of, of attack happen in the last few days and weeks. What is behind that? Well, it almost looks like a change in tactics and what we're seeing and you know we are we did hear that uh, Mr Abbas did say uh, referring to, to the mosque keep them away from us and we'll stay away from them and some Israelis feel that he has been making provocative statements would you accept any responsibility on that front at all no I think uh, in this case Mr Netanyahu who has been provoking the Palestinians is trying to transform this conflict which is a national liberation movement trying to get freedom into a religious conflict. It's not a religious conflict and we don't want any people who pray to be attacked. This is unacceptable. But Palestinians are attacked. During the last week a Palestinian mosque was burned. Yesterday, a Palestinian bus driver was hanged by Israeli settlers. Do you have and then evidence the Israeli for that? army claims there was no responsibility for that. A Palestinian yes, young I mean, child they say was, that was burned a suicide, alive. Don't they? The, the Israel says no, they that claim was so, but this is not this is not true because our autopsy has shown that he was there is no way that he hanged himself inside a bus. It makes no sense. And the physical evidence from our autopsy people has shown that this man was killed, not he hanged himself. So okay. if even the Israeli, if even the Israeli uh, military establishment and civil establishment go on justifying attacks on Palestinians, the big basic question here is the following. Can the Israelis have full security and Palestinians have no security? Impossible. 
The only way is that both people have security, both people have peace, and the only way to achieve that is to end occupation, which has transformed into a system of apartheid. This is the basic fact. Okay. Palestinian what, blood what is important, steps? and Israeli blood is equal. It's, you cannot discriminate between people. What initial sure, steps please. do you think, given there is this very tense atmosphere now, what initial steps could all sides now take to try and calm things down? Because we're seeing, you know, Israel saying they're going to threaten a harsh response. It's very simple. Instead of harsh responses, what can be harsher than killing 2,260 Palestinians, including 600 children, in less than a year? What harsher response can be more than burning mosques and attacking people on the streets? No, what we need is not harsh measures. What we need is political measures. A clear declaration from Israel that they are ready to end occupation, that they will stop settlement activities immediately and allow Palestinians, whether they are Christians or Muslims, to pray freely like Jewish people do, and then open the door for a, a solution, ending the occupation and the establishment of an independent Palestinian state, which is recognized already by 135 countries. Just finally, on the, on the question Prime of the Prime Minister access... of Israel... Sorry, yes, just this finally, last, if I can ask uh, you, the, the question of the access to the mosque, um, the, these are settlers, largely, who, who are... Who are pushing the limits here, as some people might say. It is not the Israeli government. Um, what, what can be done there to try and calm things down? And, ha and how much of that would you say is inflaming people's anger? How, how uh, you know, provocative is that whole question now? Well, you can't separate the settlers from the army because the army, the Israeli army, is protecting settlers and nobody is protecting Palestinians. We, most of us, 95% of Palestinians are not allowed to go to Jerusalem. I myself was born in Jerusalem. I worked there as a medical doctor. And since 2005, they're telling me you cannot have access to Jerusalem. Why? Why we are not having equal rights to everybody else? This is the problem. The settlers are, of course, the most vicious part. And their number has increased during the so-called peace process from 111,000 in 1993 to about 650,000 today. And the Israeli government, the foreign minister of Israel declares, we will continue to build settlements. The deputy prime minister of Israel, Yalon, declares, there is no solution. We are just managing the conflict and Palestinians can have no state. They will remain under our control. This is not a language that leads to peace. It's a language that is provoking Palestinians to the level that they get very angry when they say their people killed, burned alive, and strangulated in buses. Okay. Mustafa Baghouti, many thanks indeed for joining us. Thank you. Well, we're going to uh, go now back to Israel, and Mark Regev is uh, joining us as well on behalf of the Israeli government. Just um, first of all, what information do you have about the casualty numbers? Because we know four people have been killed in this synagogue attack, and a number are injured. That's correct. Those are the numbers that I have as well. Unfortunately, we saw this morning in Jerusalem senseless violence, uh, violence that, as you know and have reported, Hamas has embraced. Um, look, this sort of wanton uh, murder, this sort of brutality, unfortunately, is not just in Jerusalem, it's across the region. We see ISIS doing these sort of terrible beheadings in Iraq and Syria. We see similar uh, wanton violence in, Iraq, in Libya and in Yemen. Uh, uh, I think we all have to unite in condemning this sort of violence and it's a pity that so-called main, mainstream Palestinian leadership can't join us in condemning this sort of senseless murder. Well, Mahmoud Abbas's office has condemned this and yet they are saying that the Israeli government is being provocative. The uh, settler approaches to the Al-Aqsa Mosque clearly have inflamed people and uh, the issue of the bus driver who was found dead, many people feel that that was an attack too. So in terms of calming things down, you, your government is talking about a harsh response. That's going the other way, isn't it? What, what do you mean by that? Well, let's be clear. My Prime Minister was in uh, the capital of Jordan at the end of last week, together with the King of Jordan, Abdallah, together with the Secretary of State of the United States, and we called for calming things down. Uh, and we were interested in, you know, returning peace and quiet to Jerusalem so that all people here, Palestinians, Israelis, others, can live peacefully side by side. The trouble has been you've had these extremist statements uh, from Islamists who come with this sort of irresponsible language 
uh, about the Temple Mount. Uh, and my Prime Minister has said uh, uh, unequivocally there will be no change to the status quo, the religious status quo on the Temple Mount. These statements about some proposed that Israeli change, it's ridiculous. The, the government of Israel does not support that. It won't happen. But Mustafa and yet the Barghouti, Islamists, for their own... Mustafa Barghouti just uh, said, well, you know, you can't distinguish between the soldiers and the settlers who, who are pushing these uh, limits on the mosque because the soldiers protect the settlers. That is how some people will see it, won't they? I, I think, to be, to be frank, I think he's wrong. Uh, we have said unequivocally that the status quo that has been on the Temple Mount will not change. That's the policy of the Israeli government. The policy has been that Muslims can pray there and non-Muslims, Jews, Christians and others, can visit there. Now, we're not going to allow that situation to change. That's as simple as that. We've said it publicly. We've said it diplomatically to our interlocutors in the Arab world. We're very serious about that. And yet you have this irresponsible, inflammatory language from the extreme Islamists. And the mainstream Palestinian leadership, instead of uh, trying to help calm things down, is actually uh, uh, in partnership in many ways with the extremists in propagating this irrational hatred that leads to these sort of attacks that we saw this morning. Could you not do more then to secure that compound area? Well, the truth is the Temple Mount has been very peaceful and quiet for more than a week now because we have made an extra effort to calm the situation down there. We're not interested in violence. Of course, the Islamic extremists have the opposite agenda. And, and once again, I, I heard Secretary Kerry, I heard the British Foreign Secretary, I've heard others condemning unequivocally an attack this morning. It's time Palestinian leadership, President Abbas specifically, stand up and in unequivocal language uh, with no ifs or buts condemned this morning's uh, atrocity. Uh, well, they, ha I'd they have you, condemned uh, it. They have condemned it. What, what do, can, you, can you tell me specifically, Mark Regev, what your government means now by a harsh response? What are you planning? I'll answer that in a second. I just want to say this morning after the attack, the spokesman for Fatah in Arabic, uh, Fatah, the ruling party, the party that Mahmoud Abbas uh, uh, leads, uh, uh, justified the attack. Uh, and so the language uh, coming out of the Palestinian Authority is, is not unequivocal. We need them to help be a partner in trying to prevent violence, not in putting more oil on the flames. And we've seen too much of that lately. Specifically, what is your government going to do now? We will obviously beef up the police and security presence in Jerusalem to make sure there aren't copycat attacks from other extremists. And of course, making sure that there's no extremist on the Israeli side who wants to do a vigilante response. We will do our best to try to calm things down and we will act, of course, against these terrorists uh, uh, to make sure that we protect all people of, of Jerusalem, ultimately. Uh, we have an interest and I think most Palestinians have an interest. In, in peace and quiet in Jerusalem. And we can't let these extremists win. We can't let ISIS win in Iraq and Syria. We can't let Hamas and the other extremists win here.